an adventure. Yes, I'm late. I'm late because I'm a floating head. I can't find my backlight because, as you may have noticed, the Christmas tree is gone. And I've been using the Christmas tree as a backlight for two months. And so you're getting you're getting floating head tonight and with my big ears. So there we go. Maybe I am fired, yes. So who's here? Lewis is here. I assume if Lewis is here, Lewis, I assume if Lewis is here that Rebecca's here. Hello. Uh, Sonia is here. Tanya's here. Hey, Tanya. Uh, do, 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 do. Fatima's here. Hello, Fatima. You can keep your kale. Thank you very much. Uh, do, do, do. Let me give him a late slip. Michelle is here. Hey, Michelle. Captain Jack Raid. Welcome, everyone. I think I'm caught up. Tardy slip for Gord. He must. So, funny story about the cat. After having a cat here for some time, you all got to meet Arlo. And um, we really like Arlo. Very nice cat. But um, Gillen has decided she doesn't want a cat. So that worked well. That worked well indeed. Um, I think we're at the point now where uh, we're old enough. You know, it, it, why is it, right? There's no backlight. There's no backlight. My, my purple backlight is gone and there's no Christmas tree. Hi, Carol. So this is what you get until I figure out where, where my backlight is. I put it somewhere safe two months ago when we put up the Christmas tree. And do you think I can find it? No. No. And the only other light I have in here is an overhead uh, pot light. And it gives me raccoon eyes and it makes everything else too bright. So this is it. You can have a talk with her if you want, Fatima. I think we're good. I think we're at the point where if you remember um, when your parents would say, you know, I love my kids, but I really like grandkids because it's nice when they visit. But then when they're bad, they can go home with their parents. And we're kind of like that with pets now. It's nice to have a pet, but at the end of the day, the pet goes home. So it's all good. And hi to Rebecca. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, away last week, so probably fired for that and definitely a late slip for that. And we have, yes, raccoons are cute, but not, I don't want to look like one. Uh, and so we have two, uh, wait, let me get back over here. Where the heck did I go? There we go. Okay. We're already running off the rails. It's been like two minutes, three minutes and 15 seconds. We're already going off the rails. All right. So this far into it, it is time for. And we have two sets of poll results because we have last Monday's poll results and this Monday's poll results. And again, I can't see the chat. There we go. Did I lose myself? No. I know where I am. I know exactly where I am. So, <clears throat> and I still have a bit of a hem from my cold earlier in the year. Um, and we are completely renovating at work. And because we're completely renovating at work, uh, they are painting every day. There is dust everywhere. It's nasty. Um, nastier than usual. Yes, I'm trying to focus. It's very difficult. There's so much going on. All right, so the poll from last week was, how do you like your coffee when camping? The options were instant coffee, no coffee, Keurig coffee machine, uh, espresso machine. I am the campsite bar barista, and I run to the nearest Dunkin' Donuts. So Dunkin' Donuts got zero votes, so I know that someone didn't vote. But anyways, um, we had a tie between instant coffee and Keurig or coffee machine at 33%, which surprises me. Um, I guess instant coffee, if you're an actual camper and you're tent camping and you're doing pour overs or things like that. Um, but if you have electricity, why would you not want a coffee machine? Also had somebody do a write-in vote of, of cowboy coffee. Um, so if you are an actual camper and you have a campfire, I don't like to have a campfire during the day. 
So I wouldn't have a campfire first thing in the morning. I guess if it's a necessity to make your breakfast, that's a little bit different. Uh, but for us with electricity, when all the plugs are working, mind you, which they are now, um, and yeah, then I definitely go for, uh, we have we have a Keurig now. It's too hard to bring a coffee machine. So uh, no coffee was 22%. An espresso maker, campsite barista, was 11%. So thank you for participating in that. Hi, Sue. <clears throat> you never see the polls. They don't pop up on your feed. I'm just going to have to start messaging them to you. Hi, Linda. I am on at 7, Sue. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Charlie Grace is supposed to be on at 8, but it looks like she rescheduled for next week. So. That's why the old time Wednesday nights was eight. Tuesday nights I do at seven so that I kind of squeeze in. I, I don't want to uh, step on anyone's toes. Captain Jack's on at six and, and Charlie Grace is on at eight. So I kind of squeeze in between them. Squeezing in between Captain Jack and Charlie Grace. Okay. All right. Focus. Got to focus. Hi, William. <clears throat> My day's been good, Lewis. However... Like I said, I got this going on because we got a lot of dust and stuff at work. So, all right. Poll number two, which was from yesterday, which I assume Sonia didn't see. Uh, how far are you willing to travel for a great campsite? And the options were within 50 miles, within 250 miles, within 500 miles, and any distance if worth it. Uh, any distance won by a landslide by 71%. 14% uh, for 50 miles and 14% for 250 miles. Uh, and 0% for 500 miles. So again, thank you. Um, I definitely think it's worth traveling if uh, if something is worth seeing. Um, we are still very much in the early stages of planning 2024, and we're really struggling. There is, we are juggling. We have so many things up in the air that uh, hot coffee is what I want in any fashion. And yet, I've been camping with you, Fatima, and I only saw you drink one coffee. And if I would have known that, I would have made you a coffee. Fatima doesn't get any notifications. Well, I will I will tell you this. And from what I know of YouTube, which is very little, um, if the, the more stuff you watch, and I am on YouTube, I, I don't watch TV, I watch YouTube. And the more that you're on YouTube, oh, is James here? Hey, James. And I assume, Cindy, you guys are on the road. Oh, he did give her a, a cup of black coffee. Okay, I only saw the last morning when I was getting ready to leave. Oh, and you boiled it in the van. Okay, that's smart. Um, now I totally don't remember what I was talking about. Yeah, James and Cindy are on their way to Ironwood. Jack should be getting to Ironwood tomorrow, I think. Um, yeah, I totally don't remember what I was talking about. Yes, stuff. Fa -fa. Anyways. Um, yeah, so we're trying to figure out our 2024 and uh, a lot going on. Uh, there's places that we want to go. We're trying to line up vacations with the kids. Um, we are trying to line up um, Another visit to Cape May. We are trying to line up um, M24. And there's just so much on the go. Um, between work and weddings. And like I said, trying to get everyone going. Hey, Phil. And uh, it is mandatory. Where I thought we weren't calling it that. I thought we were just calling that in, in certain company. Anyway. Um, We're still plotting our route. So there's all of that going on. Um, there's just too much going on. Anyway, uh, hence the reason why I wasn't on last week. There is too much going on. I'm enjoying What are we having tonight? This is good. Oh, this is, uh, this is almost the end of my maple tea that we got in Vamp. It's got a little Canadian leaf, maple tea, 
And of course, I double bag because I like it strong. M24 is a great destination wedding venue. I'm not getting married. Do you know something that we don't know, Fatima? Daryl will be very happy. Maple tea is good. Sue, I have to send you a recipe. We did uh, we did uh, keto mac and cheese tonight, but it was cauliflower. So good. NJ24 can't wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second here. Is William coming to NJ24? Is this true? Brie likes it strong too. I like my tea like I like coffee and, and nothing in it. Nothing in it. What? Message me after the live. Okay. CG manager. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. And I'm not, uh, I have my notification shut off. So if you are trying to get a hold of me now, I probably won't hear it. I can put it on, but then it just makes a lot of noise. Fatima would like my Mac recipe as well. Alrighty then. Um, it's not hard to find. Right focus. I am so. Oh, I didn't say hi. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't even see you come in. Why don't you want pets? I don't know. Maybe this is why. Let's see if I can find this. Caesar. Does anybody like a dog? Someone would like to take him off our hands. I think we're good. And I'm not trading him in for a cat. Caesar, do you know who that is? Caesar. Gilan is here to save the day. Can you do me a favor? Oh, okay. The um, I left the recipe on the counter over there somewhere. You want to grab it for me for the, right. I left the recipe for the cauliflower on the counter over there. You want to grab it for me? Everybody wants it. So I'll, I'll, I'll grab the link and post it. It looks, it looks like Mac and cheese. <laughs> it's not much different than that. You have eight dogs, Lewis. Do you live at a kennel? Why would you have eight dogs? I don't even think that's legal here. Hi, Georgian. Oh, you said hi because she said not to. Okay. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's all good. I'll just see if I can pull up the website. Hmm. Caesar, are you going to be all right? There we go. I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. So if I do this, and I do that, did that work? There we go. You're a breeder. I'm glad you clarified that it was a dog breeder. I would be a little... Worried otherwise. Anyways, that's the recipe. Highly recommend. Okay. So we're completely off the rails. And I think we need to move on with this week's topic. Yeah, that's pretty much all it is, Phil. It's it's uh, steamed cauliflower. And you cut it small so that it's uh, it doesn't feel like cauliflower. And um, what is it? It's uh, heavy cream or whipping cream. Um, and you bring it to a boil with, uh, put in some um, onion powder, garlic powder, and uh, cream cheese. 
with um, with uh, after the cream cheese, you add cheddar, then you add some mozzarella cheese, you put it all in a baking dish, top it with Parmesan, and then bake it for about 20 minutes. It is fantastic. Did I miss Linda? I didn't see Linda coming in. Hi, Linda. If you're here, I didn't see you come in. Anyways, shall we get to the topic at hand? Which I don't know how much interest this, uh, there is. I know that after uh, after the last live stream, we had talked a little bit about financing when we were talking about, uh, about RV shows. Um, so I did a little bit of research. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, take what you want with this information, but, uh, why won't that go on there? There we go. My God. Um, this is just from all my research. Um, I found this is the most consistent information that I've seen. Uh, it seems all to be very legit. Uh, I do have a friend who is involved in that industry and I did ask him and this all seems to be pretty legit. And so... Um, we're just going to kind of cover it quickly because holy mackerel, this hour is going by fast. Uh, so your rates are going to be determined by your credit score, your credit history, and the amount that you are financing. Um, the higher the amount that you finance, the better your rate. I don't know if that's true of everything, uh, but it certainly is true of RVs. Uh, as well, your credit history, they're looking for, um, something that you have in installation payments on. So, um, you know, a mortgage or a car, something that has at least 36 payments. Um, what my friend told me is that if you were to um, finance a car, drive it off the lot, and then go and pay the loan right away, uh, it actually lowers your credit score. Uh, they want to see, they want you to build up a history. Um a credit score of 739 or less is considered subprime and you're going to pay higher rates. Um, you need a score of 800 or better to be in the top tier and to get the best rates. Um, and the number one killer of your credit score, believe it or not, is unpaid medical bills. There you go. Lobster mac and cheese. Yep. Very good. See, now I saw Linda come in. Hello, Linda. So it went in through the top and came up through the bottom. Got it. Um, you can get loans for new and used RVs. And used RVs like used cars, um, the you're not going to get as long of a term because obviously the life of the vehicle is going to be limited. Um, and an RV loan, they will use the RV for collateral, obviously. Um, but the terms of your loan are more like a house than like a car. Uh, 10 to 15 years is pretty common. Is that for me? Oh, it's, it's uh, my name and uh, the photography. Just like yours. Um, your full name? No, Gordon? just Gord. Um, yeah. So, uh, one of the high end manufacturers, which you will probably be able to guess based on the term, uh, they offer financing up to 30 years. That's because they believe that their trailers will last at least 30 years. So, um, you can also get a co signer for any of these loans, uh, but some. Loan companies will not accept a cosigner, so you need to ask the dealer. Um, one thing that I found out that was very interesting that we're going to look into this year, this I did not know, this came from my research, is that uh, in some states and in some provinces, um, your RV can be declared as a second residence. And because it's a second residence, it makes the interest on the loan a tax deduction. So definitely check into that. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a tax expert. But uh, I know that we're going to look into it and see if we can do that. Um, it's a home away from home. Well, I'm. It, it should be Prevost. Where did I get the coffee mug at? This coffee mug 
comes from a gift shop um, right at the end of, um, is it Route 9? State Highway 9? What, what is it in New Jersey? What is the 9? Anyways, right at the end of the 9 at Sunset Beach in Cape May. And oddly enough, I bought this. When did I get this? Like 2013, 2014, maybe I bought this. I think it was our first trip to, to New Jersey. And I saw this in one of Traveling Robert's videos, and I asked him about it, and it's Ileana's cup. She has the exact same cup that I do, so which I thought was kind of neat. Sonia can write off the interest on her taxes because it's technically an office for her business as well as the electricity bill on weekends only. That's cool. That's very, maybe we should do a tax show. How would that be? Route 9 ends with the parkway. Yes, it does. Okay, and it veers off, right? 109. When was that? When was last time we were in Cape May? Were we there last? Did we go to Wildwood last year? Uh, nope. I don't com. Oh, yeah. I didn't put the at symbol. Gord at. I don't think we went to. Uh... <clears throat> We didn't go last year. We went two years ago. So it's been two years since we've been, been two years since we've been in New Jersey. We didn't go to Jersey last year. No, we didn't, eh? No, it was two years ago. You're right. We went to uh, Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, last year we went everywhere else. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. And I saw somebody asked me a question. Fatima wants to know if all classes are financed the same way at terms. Uh, yes and no. Um, we're getting there. Let me get rid of that. So the more I, I'm gonna say no, Fatima. They're not they're not the financing is not the same for the different classes. And the reason being it's not about the classes, it's about the amount that you're paying. So the more you pay, the lower your rate's gonna be. And when you get into some of these class A's that are half a million plus, um, you're going to get a much better rate than if you're buying, you know, a, a $26,000 single axle trailer. So, you know, it, it's the financing is going to vary there. Um, the, the person that I was speaking to um, told me that, um, and this is going off in a different tangent, uh, Dealers typically don't make a lot or any money off of the RVs. They make all their money off the financing. And um, it, it all comes from upselling warranties uh, and kickbacks from the financing. If you're going to go in and pay cash for an RV, or if you show up with your own financing, you're actually going to pay more for the trailer um, than if you use their financing. Uh, dealers typically get a 3 to 4% kickback. So on a $50,000 trailer, the dealer's going to get $2,000 back. Um, so you can, you can negotiate a lower price on the trailer, but you're going to end up paying a higher interest rate because they have to make their money somewhere, right? Um, you'll get a better price on the RV, but you can get a lower interest rate, but you're going to lose your incentives. You're going to lose your rebates. You're going to lose any free merch that you were going to get any kind of a cashback program from the factory. All of these things are negotiable, but in the end, um, the RV dealers have their profit in mind and they're always going to get it. Oh, Tanya lost power. Okay, well, hopefully you can join us. Text me, let me know if you get your power back. Um, you know, this is also true of trades. So, um, the more they give you for your trade, the less of a discount you're going to get off of the newer one. So you have to pick your poison. You have to decide what's, what's more important to you. And, you know, if you're lowering the prices, again, you're, you're increasing the interest rate because they're going to make it. 
Down payments are mandatory because it's considered a luxury item. Yes, 0% financing does not exist in RVs, period. Um, part of the reason for that is uh, the when, when a dealer takes a trailer in, um, they have to finance it. So it's called flooring. They floor the trailer. They're paying the financing on it. So they're paying a percentage as well. They can't give you 0% because they have to make their money back. The longer a trailer sits there, the more they're paying for it, the higher, uh, uh, the more interest that they're paying on it. And so they got to get that money back. Um, but yeah, back to trades, you're going to get more if you sell your trade privately. Okay. But um, when you trade it in, it reduces the overall cost of the RV, which if you remember what I said, it increases your interest rates. But not sure about everywhere. Again, not a financial advisor, but here in Ontario, you pay tax on the final price of the trailer. So the more they give you for your trade, the less tax that you're paying on the new model. Don't know if that's true everywhere, but that's what it is here. Um, when, when, when we bought the trailer that we're in now, I traded my trailer in. Um, I could have gotten an extra three grand selling it myself, but uh, we saved almost $3,400 in taxes. And I didn't have to answer like 100 emails on Marketplace saying, is this still available? So for us, for that particular situation, uh, it was well worth, uh, it was well worth trading it in. Is this interesting? Is this boring? We're going to have to get on to some of the other stuff soon. Um, yeah, ultimately, any any discount that the dealer is giving you, they're making it back somewhere else. Don't think that you're getting any deal whatsoever. They might take five grand off of the trailer, and then that puts you into a different interest rate, and they're going to make their five grand back in interest over the course of time. So it's, you know, you're stealing from Peter to pay Paul. They're just going to juggle the numbers around to get the profit that they want on it. So you have to do what's better for you. Is a long term better for you with, with smaller payments? That's fine. You're probably going to get a, a lower interest rate. Um, you know, are, would you rather save money on the trailer? Would you rather get more for your trade and pay less in taxes? Uh, that may be true, but then you're going to pay a higher interest rate and they're still going to make their money off the interest. You know, do what works for you. Get the best bang for your buck because that's really what it's all about, right? Land of bears and cool stuff. RVs do depreciate over time. They depreciate a lot less than a car does though. Yeah, if you're trying to sell it privately and you owe money on it, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for the buyer and for the seller. Um, you know, and if you're just taking over somebody else's payments or if somebody else is taking over your payments, you better make sure that you have uh, somebody legal look at that and make sure that you don't get stuck if they don't pay. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Fatima. It's, you know what, most of us are, are into RVs and I just thought that that was uh, a little, uh, because we did kind of touch on it last week and, uh, well, not last week because somebody was absent last week, but um, when we were talking about the, the trade shows and buying RVs at a trade show, um, which everybody that I've seen said that the uh, Tampa RV Super Show had some of the best deals they had seen in a long time. Um, and that doesn't surprise me because RV sales are down a lot. Lewis is thinking of coming to Canada in two years. I'm already here. You have yours listed as a depreciating asset on your taxes every year. Mm -hmm. And again, check with your tax advisor. If you can do it, great. If you can't, um, not sure if you're claiming it as a second residence, if you would also be able to list it as a depreciating asset. So definitely something to look into. Uh, I am getting my T4. Yeah, I already got hers. 
I don't know what you guys call them in the States, but um, so we should be doing our taxes probably within the next two weeks. So I'll fill you in if I have any more info. So with all of that being said, kind of skipped ahead and went to the uh, topic of the week, which I think we'll do now. And then uh, we'll start spending the last half hour doing our little segments. So of course, if everyone likes this one. We still have this one going, except for last week. And it's where in the world have you been? Did I unmute on time there? I feel like I didn't unmute on time. So this week, uh, we are headed to back to Florida. We were at the Florida RV Super Show last time at the Florida Fair. And this week, we are going to Homestead, Florida, to the Robert Is Here Fruit Stand. W2 and 1099s. Okay. Lewis, you're going to do the whole Trans-Canada Highway? Good luck, my friend. You know that place? You should know that place. Everybody's been there. Flat cars. I wonder what the financing is on that. Anyway. So uh, let me just see here. Let me see something. Can I go back over here? Oh my goodness, that is really back. So uh, let me know if in the chat if you have been to Robert is here or if you're watching the replay because I know a lot of people are watching the replay. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have been to Robert is here. I know I've been to Robert is here, but I can't find it. Oh, there it is. So if you did miss it, Get out of here. This thing is very complicated. A lot of moving buttons. You saw it in a Traveling Robert video? Yeah, he has definitely been there. I have been there. That is the link to the little five-minute summary of it. Uh, so Robert is here. Is a fruit stand, obviously. Fruit and vegetable stand um, that was started 52 years ago. When, actually, no, it would be more than 52 years because Robert is 63 or 64 now. Uh, but at the age of six, um, his father had a farm and he put a six-year-old Robert at the corner uh, to sell cucumbers. At the, They had a little roadside stand and no one stopped. And so the next day, um, his father figured nobody could see him. And so he painted a big sign that said, Robert is here. And Robert sold out all of his cucumbers. At 14 years old, he bought 10 acres and planted avocados. Now his farm uh, goes across about 40 acres. And uh, a lot of stuff is grown locally. He does import some stuff. Um, they have uh, live entertainment. Um, they have a petting zoo. Um, everyone stops for the... You've been there, Sonia? I didn't know that. They have produce and stuff. They are known for their uh, milkshakes. However, the milkshakes or smoothies are about 12 bucks. So, a little pricey. And uh, we were there. I can't even... What did we have? A, a, a guanana, I think, is what we had. Oh, you've been here, not there. Okay. And... Uh, it was a very sweet taste and it melted in your mouth. Just like when you put cotton candy in your mouth, the way it flattens out like that, the, this fruit did the same thing. Uh, very interesting. Best mangoes that we've ever had. So fresh. Um, and, you know, we had uh, the opportunity to, to meet Robert and to talk to him. Uh, he is quite a character. He absolutely loves what he does. And uh, when he's not busy... He stands behind the counter and he has a microphone and he talks to everybody. So he truly loves what he does. It's, yeah, it's that's what the name is like, Phil. I I can't remember what it uh, I think that's how it was pronounced, was a guanana or something. Um, 
I know um, we recently rewatched Robert's video uh, when he was there. Robert Morales, not Robert Moeller, who is the the owner there, and uh, Robert was having the same thing that we had, and he said that that he used to eat that quite a bit in Cuba. So I think that that might be imported. That was very good, um, and you know we were only in Florida for five days, six days, and we couldn't bring anything back with us. So uh, there was only so much fruit that we could buy. But yeah, so that was an interesting little place. Like I said, if you have been there, let me know. If you haven't, you should definitely go. Guava, it tastes just like Guava Lewis. It's, it's, um, it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. Uh, it's, um, it's sweet. More of a texture thing. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a soft kiwi. But the easiest way I could describe it. All right. So moving right along, it is now time. For and I did all of these last week. So usually I am a little more prepared. Like there's so many buttons to press. I'm not good with buttons. All right. So random thought number one, bean bags are just boneless sofas. Okay. Oh, yes. Fatima's favorite part of the night. Bean bags. We had a bean bag once and it split and there was little styrofoam nuggets all over the place. No push of the buttons. I have a question for you about pushing buttons after. Because there's something I want to do on here and I can't figure it out. And all of the tutorials for this are for the desktop version. And the desktop version, all they're trying to do is make you upgrade. I hate the desktop version. So uh, do, 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 do random thought number two. Teeth are only a problem. Teeth are the only problem where if you ignore them, they will go away. Well, I don't know about that. I think if you ignore them long enough, you will go away because you'll have sepsis. It's very quiet. Maybe we should put music. This is not on... Uh, I did not put this on Facebook or Instagram because that doesn't seem to be doing a heck of a lot. Where did it go? Wow, the music is gone. It's the day the music died. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Okay. No music. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Come and push the air horn. Hmm. Wait, what did Sue say? Bean bags are too low to the floor to me. The phrase I've fallen and I can't get up, right? If I'm sitting on the floor, I look like a bean bag. So, all right. Random thought number. Wait, these aren't numbers. So, be number three. Pregnant women are the only true bodybuilders. Okay. Thoughts? Yes? No? All my kids get up at uh, 5 30 in the morning and go to the gym. So I don't think they would agree with that. But random thought number four when you give someone food, you're feeding them, but when you give them water, you aren't watering them. Fudge. What are you talking about, fudge, Lewis? Lewis, are you lagging? I think Lewis is lagging. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Do, 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 do. So many buttons, so little time. 
You're not lagging. Why are you talking about fudge? One goes to a watering hole. This is true, but that's usually not, that usually does not involve water. Random thought number five. We'll never really know what it smells like underwater. I wonder if there's some way for science to determine that. Because, yeah, I, nobody would be able to smell anything underwater. Nobody has fudge, Sue. Lewis said something about fudge. I don't know what he's talking about. Fudge is probably one of the easiest things to make on keto. It was actually the first thing I learned to make on keto. And it was basically... Um, what was in it? It was melted. You'd use a, uh, a, a double boiler or a, a Dutch oven and you would melt cream cheese and add uh, fake sugar. Um, I like erythritol or, or uh, monk fruit. And you'd put that in there with some uh, cocoa powder. Uh, just a plain Hershey's cocoa powder and a little bit of heavy cream. And you just get it all nice and smooth. You put it in a pan and let it set in the fridge. That was the first first keto recipe I knew. That was very many years ago. And uh, clearly, I made it a lot because I know the recipe by heart. Actually, it was good. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't creamy like fudge. It was uh, more creamy. It was like sweet cheese. And I stopped making it. I found much better recipes, which I was supposed to make my donuts tonight, which I think it did give you the recipe for. And... Um, I don't have any almond flour, so I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow. Lewis and Rebecca are making fudge. Let's just say it's a good thing Rob's not here. Hey, Don. All right. And that was it for the random thoughts, which only leaves us for, I hope that was to your satisfaction, Fatima. So that leaves us to Would You Rather. So Sonia has fresh cannolis at home. Well, those are definitely not allowed. I can't eat fudge, Lewis. Nothing with sugar. Dawn is just in time for Would You Rather. Free fudge for everyone. I do like fudge. And uh, I spent a fair bit of money on fudge on the uh, boardwalk in Wildwood. Because they do have good fudge. It's gluten-free, but it's not sugar-free. And those are two very different things. I can eat as much gluten as I want. All right. Would you rather have no taste buds or be colorblind? Uh, I am going to have to say, I really, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to be colorblind. I really wouldn't. There's too much to see. Besides, I, I got to make sure my socks match every day. I would rather have no taste buds. In fact, if I could avoid eating altogether and just take some kind of nutrition pill, I would be fine with that as well. Eating is not, uh. You'd never know it from the size of me, but it's not at the top of my list. Too many colors. We don't have to see them all at once. Everybody would rather be colorblind than have no taste buds. Wow. I'm out here on my own. Phil as well. I just love the colors. Oh, Tom's at it again. If your socks don't match, you will have a pair just like them at home. Or you won't. That's the thing. You'll only ever know if you lose one sock because if you lost them both, you would never know. Why no taste buds? Because... I don't, I don't care what food tastes like. I eat to live, um, but I can't imagine 
missing a sunrise or a sunset or, or, you know, I don't know. I just, well, the flavors, I can get texture from food. You know, there would still be some kind of sense going on. Would I rather be short or tall? Well, I am already short. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for joining us. I'm already short, so I don't need to uh, feel like you're getting a reputation. Uh, it's because your jokes are very intense. I'll see. Don loves his taste buds the most. Not big on colors. He lives to eat. rather be bald or have hair. Did you write all these down? I'd rather have hair and then I could shave it and be bald if I wanted to. All right. Would you rather number two, would you rather get rich in a way that disappoints your family or make it or make just enough money to live? Um, I can be a pretty big disappointment to my family and money has nothing to do with it. So Ask me about the burn mark on the side of the trailer. This disappointed very many people and had nothing to do with money other than the fact that it, it would cost way too much to get it fixed. Lewis is getting it from Google. I'm telling you right now, Lewis, close the page because we're not going past 8 o'clock. Yeah, I think I would rather just make enough money to live. I don't need to be rich. Be, being a call girl would be frowned upon. Well, if that's what it takes to disappoint your family, Fatima. Disappointment is relative and Sue has lots of relatives. There you go. Don would take rich. He doesn't care if he's a disappointment. Uh, would you rather? I am not staying after eight, Lewis. I have things to do. I had specifically planned to be off at eight so that we could go and visit Charlie Grace, but she's not on tonight. So, um, <laughs> Don already is. I'm sure you're not a disappointment to anyone, Don. Of course, Charity's not here, so. Phil would rather be rich and disappoint his family and we can ask his pimp. There you go. Would you rather have front row tickets to a musician you've never heard of or listen to your favorite band from the parking lot? Um, you can have a lot of fun in the parking lot. I guess it would depend on the kind of music it is because... Um, I don't think I'd want to be front row for a band that I've never heard of. And then they play Screamo. I think I'd rather be in the parking lot. And honestly, uh, I'm at the, the point in my life and the age where uh, it's just not fun to go to a concert. It sounds better on my phone. There's no crowd. Uh, I prefer, if I'm doing live music at all, I prefer to be a small little, you know, in a bar somewhere. Um, we've got a big stadium here. We get lots of bands here. I've seen Kiss here. I've seen Judas Priest here. I've seen uh, uh, Garth Brooks. Um, and it just, it, it, it's not fun. I saw Ozzy here twice. And yeah, it's just, I, I've outgrown that. What kind of tailgate party? Something that's fun. Kind of like M23. Parking lot is you can have paradise by the Jasper. Okay. Well, you do what you want. Party in the parking lot. Just don't go, don't go knocking if Tom's car's rocking. That's all I'm saying. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Yes, if you don't mind hitting the thumbs up. 
Green Cow want to have a party. Okay, good. Would you rather swim in a lake or in an ocean? Depends. Judas Priest is great live, and uh, we saw them on their 50th anniversary tour, and they were still great. Uh, Rob Halford can still move. Oh, I know the quote, Tom, and I, I assume you know what it means. If you're doing that in the parking lot, we're not, uh, we're not going near your car. Um, Garth was badass in a, in a small arena. Yeah, I can imagine that would be pretty good. We saw him. We had to wait in line to get bracelets that told us what position we would be in line to buy tickets. And then we ended up sitting at the back of the arena up on the third level. And if it wasn't for the big screens on either side of the stage, it, it, it could have been anybody up there. It could have been Sonia. And I wouldn't have known the difference because, you know, and, and for all of the, uh, for all of the time it took to get those tickets, uh, getting in and out of that building, uh, it was a nightmare and just not worth it. What do I mean? It depends. Well, um, the nicest beaches are on the ocean as opposed to lakes. Um, but the ocean can be very cold. Some of the lakes can be very warm. If you've ever been to any of the Great Lakes, uh, Lake Michigan is almost like the ocean. Uh, Sable Beach on the other side of Lake Huron is uh, almost like the ocean. You can get huge waves, uh, but it's fresh water. Garth had his fourth million fan when he was here in Grand Rapids. That's cool. Canadian Brian Adams is great life too. Um, yeah. I, I saw Brian Adams once uh, when I was in high school and he tripped and fell on the stage and everybody laughed. And so he threw the mic on the ground and walked off the stage and never came back out. So, yeah. Would you go on a bike ride or a hike? Well, it depends on if I have a bike or not, I guess. The ocean can be packed but less crowded. I don't think it can be both. I grew up on a lake and I love the lake and there are much safer things in the lake than in the ocean, but yeah, great lakes are like ocean, just no sharks. And I'm not sure if Fatima can uh, talk about, um, about, uh, uh, Dune, is it Dunes, Dunes National Park up in the, uh, up in the UP and, uh, or is it Sleeping Bear? I think it's sleeping bear oh now i'm gonna have to pull up a map you guys are gonna make me go past eight o'clock do, 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 do. fatima's probably gonna say the answer before i can even look it up but i can't see the chat wow i thought i had this saved on my map but i don't Where are the big dunes? Anyways, they have the big dunes and sleeping bears in the lower peninsula. Okay, thanks, Kyle. And um, yeah, Fatima got it too. Okay. And uh, the sand there looks pretty wild and very blue. Uh, water, very much like the ocean. Bray saw Garth and never seen so much beer spilt. Sounds like a good time. I won't turn into a pumpkin if I go past eight. This is true. Empire, okay. The only place I've been in northern Michigan, uh, we went to see ACDC in concert at the castle in Charlevoix, which is now a wedding venue. I don't know if they still do concerts there or not, but parts of me are a pumpkin. All right, we need to get on with this. Would you rather have hands for feet or feet for hands? I think I'd rather have hands for feet because if I had feet for hands, I wouldn't have a thumb. And without opposable thumbs or nothing.
Hands for feet. Hands for feet, you could climb trees like a like a monkey because you could grab the branches. So in Fatima, agree. Hands for feet. And your shoes would fit like a glove. What's a prehensile tail? Oh, wait. No, that was wrong. Okay, Lewis is confused as well. It's not just me. A prehensile tail. Oh, a tail that can grip. Oh, see? There you go. We learned something new today. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. So, like monkeys, right? Oh, I love where this goes sometimes. All right, and last one. Would you rather live on canned food or ramen noodles for a week? Ooh. Well, I'm not big on canned food. I guess it depends on what it is, right? But I do like ramen noodles. Yeah, I'm going to pass eight by a few minutes, I guess. Um, Sue doesn't like ramen noodles. I like ramen noodles. But canned food, you could have some variety. You could have some veggie. You could have some canned ham. It's all ham. But I do like the ramen noodles. A prehensile tail was what? Wait, where did that go? What Greta's brother had. Hansel? Hansel and Gretel? Would you rather have a hot dog or a burger for your whole lifetime? Hmm. That's a good question, Lewis. I hope that's not pointing at me, Brie. But yes. Oh, no, that's pointing at you. Yeah, carbs are good. I just try not to eat them. Progresso and Campbell's Chunky Soups are pretty good, too. Yes, they are. Who's sending me a message now? Yeah, my phone's about to die. Sending me jokes in the middle of the live stream. All right. Lewis is diabetic. You're diabetic and you're eating fudge? Does white cloth count as canned goods? All right, I'm with you on that. And low carb. So there you go. William must have his pork and beans. What kind of beans, William? Are they canned beans? A little bit of fudge, not a lot. No more than 15 grams. Screw pasta. You can have the cloth. Yeah. And bacon makes everything better. But they don't have bacon in a can. So, on that note, bacon does make everything better. I can't think of ending it any better way than that. In a can. So, beans in a can. We do that... We, Daryl's not here, right? I can say this. When we go camping, when we're in the trailer, at least one meal has to be breakfast for dinner. I don't care what Daryl says. It's a thing. And, oh, he's dietic. He just watches calories. Um, they should have bacon flavored white claw. That would be good. Uh, and yes, yeah, so when we do the breakfast for dinner, we have to have beans whether I'm on keto or not. We have to have beans. Yeah, breakfast for dinner is the best. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what we had last night. The dog is telling me that it's time to go because he wants to start barking at everyone. So with that, I will bid you adieu. We will be back next week. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone is on tomorrow night. Uh, Jack will be on from 6 to 8. Uh, Sonia will be on painting Thursday night and back on Friday night on her regular channel. Sue and Bob will be as Bob in the truck this week. Are we farming this week? I missed last week. I have to go back and watch the, uh, watch the replay. Um, Sonia will be releasing something on Saturday. I will have a new release Saturday at 11 after Sonia. It's going to be a busy week. Anyways, bangers and mash. Mm -hmm. Bushes and or, or vendor camps. We have uh, up here, it's Heinz in Canada. Heinz beans are the best. And you can have the regular baked beans, the baked beans and maple syrup. Oh, that's good. Or baked beans and tomato sauce. I definitely prefer the maple syrup, but that's just me. First RV show video dropping Saturday. Oh, there you go. And you've reminded me. There is an RV show going on this weekend, and I said I wasn't going, and Gillen twisted my arm, and we're going. So I'll watch your RV video on Saturday. I may record. I may not. I don't know. I don't know. I like just walking through the trailers, and it's, it's usually so busy. We'll see how busy it is. We're going on Sunday, so. They do sell Thomas English muffins in Canada, but I do have to tell you that the great value English muffins, I prefer them. But the Thomas is good. We used to get the Thomas when we had caramel spread, and the caramel would get into all those little holes in the Thomas. Is next Tuesday or Wednesday me and my girlfriend see you again? It's going to be Tuesdays for the foreseeable future. Tuesdays at 7. Wednesdays is done until my work schedule changes. All right. So with that, I will say good night. I appreciate you all joining me. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Bye.